In this video, we'll be learning how to find the area of compound figures. A compound figure is a shape that is made up of simple shapes. For example, this yellow figure is compound because it can be broken up into three rectangles. Rectangle 1, rectangle 2, and rectangle 3. Similarly, this figure on the right is compound because it can be broken up into a triangle and a rectangle. Let's find the area and perimeter of the figure shown below. This figure is different from the ones that we've worked with so far because there is no direct area formula for it. Instead, we have to use a different strategy in order to determine how many square units can fit inside of this irregular shape. One strategy that we can use is to decompose or break the figure up into smaller shapes that we do know how to find the area of. There are a couple of different ways that we could do this. For example, we could make two vertical cuts and get three rectangles. We could also make two horizontal cuts instead and get three rectangles. It does not matter how you choose to decompose or cut up your figure as long as you're able to find the area of each shape that you cut it up into. I'm going to decompose the figure into three rectangles by using two vertical cuts. So I'm going to draw them into the shape and then to stay organized I'm going to label each of the three shapes that I've decomposed my figure into with a number. So I'm going to call the first rectangle rectangle 1 and I'll highlight its area just so that you can see. I'm going to call the middle rectangle rectangle 2 and I'll highlight its area in blue. And I'm going to call the third rectangle, rectangle 3. And I'll highlight its area in green. So now, to find the total area of our figure, all we have to do is find the area of each individual rectangle, and then add them up. So let's write that down on our papers. A total is equal to the area of rectangle 1, A1, plus the area of rectangle 2, A2, plus the area of rectangle 3. Since these are all rectangles, I can use either length times width or base times height to find each of their areas. I'm going to use the length times width version of the formula. So to find the area of rectangle 1, I'll need the length of rectangle 1 times the width of rectangle 1. To find the area of rectangle 2, I'm going to need the length of rectangle 2 times the width of rectangle 2. And to find the area of rectangle 3, I'm going to need the length of rectangle 3 times the width of rectangle 3. Okay, let's substitute into our formula. Rectangle 1. The length of rectangle 1, uh-oh, I don't see it over here, but I can look to the opposite side to figure out how long it is. This is going to be 4 centimeters long, and I got that length from looking across the opposite side. So 4 times the width of rectangle 1, well, that's 2 centimeters. Okay, on to rectangle 2. We have to do a little bit of work to find the dimensions of rectangle 2. Let's use the information given to us in the picture. We know that the top of rectangle 1 is 2 centimeters, which means that the bottom of rectangle 1 must be 2 centimeters as well, since opposite sides in a rectangle are always congruent. So I'm going to fill that into my picture. Same thing with rectangle 3. The top is 2 centimeters, so the bottom must be 2 centimeters as well. We also know that the entire bottom of the figure is 8 centimeters long, so we can use that information to figure out how long rectangle 2 is. 
two centimeters plus two centimeters is four centimeters, I would need four more centimeters to make eight centimeters in total. So the length of rectangle two must be four centimeters because two plus four plus two gives us eight. Now for the width of rectangle two, we would look across at the left side of rectangle one, that's four centimeters, and this little piece of rectangle one is one centimeter from here to here. The whole right side is four centimeters since the left side is four centimeters, which means that the width of rectangle two must be three centimeters because three plus one gives us four altogether. So now we can substitute in those values. The length of rectangle two is four centimeters and the width of rectangle two is three centimeters. For rectangle three, the length is four centimeters and the width is two centimeters. Okay, so for rectangle one, length times width, the area is eight square centimeters. Plus for rectangle two, length times width, four times three is 12 square centimeters. Plus for rectangle three, length times width, four times two is eight square centimeters. So our total area for the compound figure is eight plus 12 plus eight square centimeters, which gives us 28 square centimeters in total. So the total area is 28 square centimeters. Now let's find the perimeter. Remember that perimeter is the total distance around a figure. Make sure to include all of the sides as you go around in your calculation. I'm going to mark mine to make sure that I don't miss any. So perimeter is equal to 4 centimeters plus 2 centimeters plus 1 centimeter plus 4 centimeters, since the opposite side is 4 centimeters, plus 1 centimeter, plus 2 centimeters, plus 4 centimeters, plus 8 centimeters. So the perimeter is equal to 4 plus 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7, plus 4 is 11, plus 1 is 12, plus 2 is 14, plus 4 is 18, plus 8 is 26 centimeters. Note that the label for perimeter here is centimeters and not square centimeters. Perimeter is measured in regular units while area is measured in square units. In this second example, we'll find the area of the compound shape by breaking it up into a triangle and a rectangle. We'll call the triangle shape one and the rectangle shape two. So in order to find the total area of the compound shape, we're going to have to find the sum of the area of shape one, the triangle, and the area of shape two, the rectangle. So let's start with the area of shape 1, which is the triangle. So I'm going to write A1 equals 1 half base times height, since the formula for area of a triangle is 1 half the base times the height. So now looking at the picture, I need the base and height of the triangle. Well, to figure out the base, I'm going to have to fill in that the top of the rectangle is 5 units long since the bottom is five units. With that information, I know that the base will have to be three units because three plus one plus one will give me five in total. Now for the height, 
I'm going to have to fill in the right side of the rectangle. which is going to be six units long. And since this whole distance from top to bottom is nine units, I know that the height of the triangle must be three units long because three plus six makes nine. So we can substitute in three for the base, and 3 for the height, and then this is equivalent to 1 half times 9. So the area of shape 1, the triangle, is 4.5 or 4.5 square units. Now we just need to find the area of shape 2, which is the rectangle. So the formula for that is going to be length times width, and the length of the rectangle is 6 units, the width of the rectangle is 5 units, so 6 times 5 is 30 square units. So the area of the rectangle is 30 square units. So now we can find our total area of the compound figure which is going to be the sum of these two areas, the area of the triangle plus the area of the rectangle. So 4.5 plus 30 will give us a total of 34.5 square units. Here's a quick summary of what we've learned in this video. A compound figure is a figure that is composed or made up of simple shapes. One strategy for finding the area of a compound figure is decomposing it or breaking it up into simple shapes and finding the sum of those areas. Finally, remember to keep your work organized so that somebody can follow along with what you did by looking at your paper. That's all for this video. Keep up the great work!